Hey, this is Carla from the Butcher Babies. This is George Corp from the Fisher from Kendall Court. Hey, this is Rex from Kill Devil Hill. It's Wednesday 13. This is Jackson Gallagher. This is Odorous from Water. Listening to Rabbit Noise. On Rabbit Radio. Turn it up. Hey, Christian, how are you, man? Hey, what's up? Yeah, dude, it is definitely good to talk to you again. And, man, so many people are excited for this upcoming tour next month. Like, the buzz is insane. It's going to be awesome. That's awesome. I, I, that's the first I, I hear something like that. It's great to hear, man. I mean, we're excited. Any time we go to Australia, we're, already, we're very excited. The fact that we're coming back and doing the debut is, you know, maybe it's too much excitement. Guilty of, of being too excited. Well, uh, I think well, last time, like, it was uh, 2014 is when I spoke to you. You were, you were playing Soundwave, and then you were meant to come back and do Soundwave 2016. And you were meant to be playing Revolution, Revolution on that tour, but then it all got canned. Yeah, yeah that was that was crazy, man. I mean, we weren't the only band that was like truly deeply affected by something like that. Uh, but it, it was sad to see a cool festival like that go. I know that there was some perhaps top secret info as, as to what might have happened and how it all went down, but. As far as we were concerned, man, it was one of the coolest music festivals we had ever been a part of. Not being able to come back right away after having after having Sunday canceled was certainly uh, upsetting, and we're just excited to be able to come back this time, man. And we have a lot of friends in Australia, and you know, and even our drummer has family there. He's married to an Australian girl, and you know, his daughter was born there, and we just are, are so looking forward to it, man. It's it's an amazing experience, and we're so grateful. We 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 all could have been, you know, somewhere else. Who who knows what we could have been doing? But being able to to still play music and to go to Australia, man, I, I am not upset at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome, and I think it works out better for the fans with a headline tour anyway, because I mean, you get more time, you get to. Chill a little bit more, I think. It's uh, and and you're playing the album from start to finish. I think that's that's going to be yeah, amazing. I don't, I don't think we would have. I don't think on Sunday we might have. Well, yeah, we might have had just barely enough time to play the whole album. But it's like about a, like a forty forty five minute trip. So you know, mm. we'll definitely have plenty of time. And, and you know, and we planned a couple of surprises. You know, we haven't been there in a while. And we did have an album that came out. And we, we, you know, I would I would love to be able to play at least one song from the new album and, and maybe one song from Confession and something from One Nation. And if we did one song for for, for each album that came out after Revolution, I think they would be making a wise choice. And uh, what what would be the biggest challenge from playing uh, the album from start to finish? I mean, obviously it's cramming in a lot. Plus, you want to get those extra songs in there. It's quite a mission. Um, I, I don't think of it as a challenge. I mean, there may be a challenge to it, and, and perhaps I involuntarily, uh, before every show, get into moments, you know, where, where it's an hour, two hours before the show, and maybe psychologically I start getting myself ready, but it's not something that I kind of think about, but I suppose the more challenging thing is going to be, you know, making sure everything works good, nothing breaks, making sure our crew guys are rested, and making sure that they're feeling 100% about the gear and, you know, hopefully the sound, the, the sound, the sound system at all the clubs will be good. And that'll probably be the hardest uh, thing to tackle. I mean, we're pretty mature as musicians and, uh, you know, the other, the other day I was thinking how lucky we are to be able to play our entire first album, but with the maturity that we learned as musicians and just as human beings, you know, and, and to bring it back and present it that way. So it's exciting and, and and it's probably challenging in one way or another, but I try not to think about it, man. I'm just having such a great time and trying to stay in the moment, not uh not overthink things anymore in life. So perhaps it's uh the more peaceful way to do it. Just enjoy it, man. That's it. Yeah, you know, it's only rock and roll. Fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> For lack of a better word, fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, man, I, I believe there are a couple of unreleased bonus tracks that were given out to the first 300 tickets sold in each city or something like that. I mean, what, what can you tell us about those? Um, unreleased bonus tracks, they might be from an EP or some demos that we might have done. I'm not 100% sure. 
what um, they planned as far as distributing some some digital content, ticket pre-sales. But I'm, I'm sure it's either some of the demos that we made before we signed with Roadrunner Records or some of the demos that we made before we recorded the conception album. So which one they may be is possibly a surprise as much as it is for the fans as it is for me because I, I know there's a pool of about 10 to 15 songs that we have that are like exclusive material that we'll share once in a while, but it's not really something that's out there or that you can find easily or nothing like that, you know. So is there a lot like in the vault from that time period, you know, that you'll maybe release one day? Right? You have a lot stored away? Um I want to say that we, we've kind of used most of it for digipacks and things like that. Mm. So there may still be like four or five. There may still be like four or five songs, though. Because that was the big thing back then, too, especially with Roadrunner. Like, there was always like the digipacks and stuff like that. I just remember there was always... Yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was definitely... Um, it, was, it was about product. You know, when there was still sales in the music industry, it was about product. I mean, obviously, now it's about content, but, yeah, okay, content, but then you got to figure out how to make a revenue from content. Back then, the content made revenue through product. So, you know, a label like Roadrunner, we were very lucky to be a part of a, of a label that knew metal very well and, and mm-hmm. knew the cycle that is that you need to kind of be surrounded by in order to release the albums effectively and things like that. And uh, they, they they were always into having like little exclusives and you know certainly one of the greatest rock labels that's ever existed for sure. Totally. And uh, you know I always got the feeling that you know you guys worked insanely hard on that first album, um, especially being like the first major release. I mean. Was that at yeah, the time? Yeah, not man. We were not stopped. Was it, I mean, did did you find that at being a young band at that time, just breaking in and your first album, was that a lot of pressure for you guys at that time? I can only speak personally because in our band, we, we each came from different parts and, you know, our drummer Dave had been in the music industry for a while and he had put out albums to other artists and he had toured for a long time. So mm. he was more knowledgeable as far as touring and inner work with the industry and stuff like that. And and I'm sure that for some of us, it was challenging. Um, for me personally, it was, it was very challenging, but it, it's only something that I realize now because back then the way that, the obviously insane way that I dealt with something being too challenging for me to understand was to just party my ass off. Yeah, you know, and yeah, not try to comprehend what the fuck was going on, but really just to party as much as I could and like party, party, and you know, party women, party women, party women, and you know, I suppose now that I look back, I, I guess I'm not trying to justify what I did, and you know, been being an idiot throughout many years of my early career, but I, I suppose that was the way that I was trying to like deal with wow, this is way challenging. How, how the hell can I be a vocalist that's touring on stop six days a week? You know, and I barely became a singer like a year or two before that, you know. I mean, the bands that I have been in, I've been playing string instruments pretty much, and I had a little bit of backing vocal experience here and there, and you know, sang in a death metal band and stuff like that, but when it came to really vocalizing and things like that, you know, to me it was extremely challenging. I, I didn't know how to deal with it. And the way that I did dealt with it, I suppose, looking back now, is I, I partied as much as I could. Sadly, that's the way I dealt with it. I mean, look at, look now, I mean, how many years later, I mean, you're still doing it and still out there kicking ass. So, I mean, even yeah, though you have you know, the, the blessing, <laughs> Dude, the bless, that's why, that's why I, truly, I truly feel the blessing is, you know, we're getting to bring back these songs, but with a little bit of maturity that we've learned as musicians and as human beings, you know? At the time, it was challenging for us, and even though we were extremely trying to be as, as creative as possible, trying in many ways to whatever music we were going to bring forth and, and offer listeners to have it be something that's expressive and very, you know, unique. And uh, I, I think in doing so, we made it challenging for ourselves, and it was. You know, and some of the musicians in, in, in our band handled it better than ours. I know I handled it like shit. You know, and some of the other guys were already, they were already more 
perhaps a little more subtle in their psychology, you know, a little calmer. Dave was a little bit more experienced, so he felt a little differently, you know. You know, but I, I'm glad, like you said, dude, I'm blessed to still be able to do it and to be able to bring back some of those older songs and have the fans connect with them, but at least allowing them to hear it, you know, as the mature band that we become. I think it's so awesome. Oh, me too, man. I can't wait. It's gonna be it's gonna be one hell of a tour, that's for sure, man. And you're bringing uh, Terra Universal with you as well, which is I yeah, mean, yeah, our unreal. homies that wear a lot of makeup. Our homies that wear a lot of makeup and destroy all the bathrooms, man. They're going to be turning all the bathrooms into black. <laughs> all, the, all those restrooms, all those restrooms and showers in those venues are going to be black by the time we leave the venue. <laughs> someone's, uh, it's going to be someone's uh, joke. <laughs> Just not <like> this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to be mine, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, oh, man, it's, it's going to be unreal. And, of course, is there a new album in the works? We are working on material, you know, there's, there's material that we started getting together individually, um, but unfortunately, we all live in different parts of the United States, and we're in different states, and really spread out, you know, mm. it's not like we live in a state next to each other, and we could drive to each other, all of us have to fly, so we don't have a budget cleared yet, as far as getting together, and putting all the songs, and sifting through all the ideas, and picking the... Uh, track list for the album so we definitely have 2018 as the year we want to put out some music but i think we got to be smart about what it is that we're going to release and we really have to offer something that's far and beyond whatever we've done you know and we and I, that's probably the more challenging thing that we could do in our career but to do anything less we'd be selling ourselves short and we'd be selling the fans short so i think Hopefully, I can get the band to agree, like, hey, let's really be thoughtful about the album and really be picky with the songs and let's really say something that I don't want to say that the world needs, but that, but, but that the world can truly understand mm. under the state it's in right now. Oh, man, I, I can't wait to see what you guys do next. Because I, I love the last album, Till Death. Uh, sorry, I can never pronounce it properly. It's my Australian. Uh, till death, last right, I'm familiar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounds horrible coming out with it, my accent. Um, but I love that album. I thought it was awesome, man. So uh, I can't wait to. Uh, oh, right on, right on. There's certainly some songs on that album that I thought were great. You know, I think we we touched on a lot of really, really cool, you know, uh, epic things. And, and, you know, it's going to be a challenge the next album for sure, but, you know, we're, we're up for it, man. And, and I think we're, we're lucky to still be around and to be able to make albums, you know, in, in the state of mind that we are music, as musicians and <laughs> being a little bit more mature is a blessing, dude, you know. And we owe it to our fans. We, we definitely have to dig and at least offer them something that's just amazing, that makes them feel amazing. Sure. Well, uh, dude, we can't wait to see you guys next month. It's going to be unreal, and uh, hope to uh, catch you and the boys in Brisbane. It's going to be it's going to be sick. Beautiful, man. Well, I'll see you there, brother. Great talking.